but we're shorter than most adults, Klaus said. Won't that look strange to the audience? You will be playing two midgets who attend the wedding, Olaf said patiently. And what will I do? Violet asked. I am very handy with tools, so perhaps I could help you build the set. Build the set? Heavens no, Count Olaf said. A pretty girl like you shouldn't be working backstage. But I'd like to, Violet said. Count Olaf's one eyebrow raised slightly, and the Baudelaire orphans recognized this sign of his anger. But then the eyebrow went down again as he forced himself to remain calm. But I have such an important role for you on stage, he said. You are going to play the young woman I marry. Violet felt her oatmeal and raspberries shift around in her stomach as if she had just caught the flu. It was bad enough having Count Olaf acting in Loco Parentis and announcing himself as their father, but to consider this man her husband, even for the purposes of a play, was even more dreadful. Count Olaf reached out one of his spidery hands and stroked Violet on the chin, looking deep into her eyes. You will, he said, participate in this theatrical performance, and I would prefer it if you would participate voluntarily. But as I believe Mr. Poe explained to you, I can order you to participate and you must obey. Olaf's sharp and dirty fingernails gently scratched on Violet's chin, and she shivered. The room was very, very quiet as Olaf finally let go, and stood up and left without a word. The Baudelaire children listened to his heavy footsteps go up the stairs to the tower they were forbidden to enter. Well... Klaus said hesitantly. I guess it won't hurt to be in the play. It seems to be very important to him, and we want to keep on his good side. 